But I've got uh, a couple of things to speak about, right? Because I think this Brendan Shaw hate online is getting a little bit too... It's getting a little bit too much for me. and I'm not really comfortable with it. And I kind of, you know, again, because I made another video about Brendan Shaw must be stopped. And I think, you know, Brendan Shaw, the Brendan Shaw hate needs to kind of chill out and relax, okay? So, first off, yes, it's true. For the trolls out there, for the people that don't like trolls, I'm just referring it loosely. I know some of you guys aren't trolls. You're just, you know, uh, you're being objective and saying that the special is horrible. I understand it. So let's just say for the people that don't like the special, no, let's, let's not use quotes. For people that don't like the special, yes, you're right. The special is not good, right? If you compare it to other comedians out there, other comedy specials out there, it doesn't even, it doesn't come close and it's not up to par. I understand. Yes, Brendan Shaw can be annoying. I get it. He has some personality quirks. The quirks that make him, or quirks, the quirks that make him successful or that have gotten into his platform are also the ones that could um, rub people up the wrong way. Yes, his fight analysis is null and void for the most part on uh, the Below the Belt show, which a lot of people are annoyed about. He has a show on Showtime or on YouTube called Below the Belt where he spends, you know, the majority of the beginning of the show talking about his life and gives you an update, which is, you know, quite entertaining for the most part because he doesn't really get into it sometimes on the Fire and the Kid, but he doesn't spend that much time uh, analyzing fights which he obviously admittedly says he's not Luke Thomas but you know a little bit of analysis will be good he doesn't watch the prelims doesn't watch the undercards he only watch the main card the main events um the new the kind of the rap the, ra the roundup of news that they do with chin and the other dude in their in their office i think in their production team where they run up some of the mma news he it seems quite disinterested in and overall he seems quite disinterested disinterested in the sport of mma overall maybe because of his history at ufc blah blah, blah. okay i get it his relationship with his relationship on t5k with brian callen it looks a little bit strange looks like sometimes he doesn't let brian callen finish his thoughts i know sometimes brian callen can be a bit annoying with the way he kind of colors some of his stories. I get that true. Um, he can sound like a bully sometimes. Brennan Shaw BS with the story of pushing that guy through the window. I understand. Um, it seems like he only got there because of Joe Rogan. Yes, that on paper or on first sight, that could be true too. All those things are more than obviously true, right? Um, Theo Vaughn is more funny than him on, be the, uh, on the King of the Sting. Yes, it's true, but he also admits that himself. Fine. All those things to one side, that's completely true. But what also is true is that this is his first special, right? It's only three years in. He probably should have done it so early, but I'm assuming it has something to do with the fact that he's in bed with Showtime. They've invested a lot of money into him. They really think he could be their next big star with Paulie Man and Argy going off and doing whatever he's doing with bare knuckle boxing and being a bit of a wayward soul in that regard and not really, you know, investing in his production. Because I think, you know, Paulie Man and Argy could easily do what Brendan Shaw is doing with his own breakdown show with, you know, push and put money into him. But he's maybe not the most, you know, stable of characters in order to kind of do that thing with. And I think Brendan Shaw maybe is a little bit more business minded and sees kind of the long game in things. So that may be his reason why they're putting the money into him. But regardless, the except that Showtime, you know and again you have to you have to understand as you as old school and as kind of slow to move as the entertainment industry is there are some real killer operators in that scene right some people that really know the exact science of how to build a show how to garner attention how to retain that attention how to court controversy um outrage virality whatever they know what they're doing right so all these things that you're feeling the way that you post stuff online and you're tearing him down you like put it in your mind that there might be someone behind the scenes that is actually dropping these little things out there and kind of playing everyone like a puppet so that you know Brendan Shaw remains visible out there because again you know his visibility in terms of of a commentator on MMA or commentator yeah a commentator on MMA on the community on a, or in a comedy community overall is really unrivaled right he's probably the only one outside of maybe Joe Rogan so that's great so I think we have to kind of you know Put your hate to one side and kind of think you know what if uh, if a company at showtime is investing that much money into him and he seems to you know i just listened to the below the belt now and he's getting a new studio that's going to be um all encompassing it's going to host is below the belt it's going to host king of the sting it's going to host fire and the kids he doesn't have to move locations that again shows you know they really invested in his overall project um it's just it seems like he's going on for strength to strength right it doesn't seem like he's wanting for a lot of things right he picks and chooses the movies or tv roles he auditions for he doesn't need to do that. He goes on tour often. So there's other uh, there's other factors at play that would play into the fact that he got the special. It's not just that it's, he didn't get a special based on talent alone. We know that, right? He's aware of that too. But I think the offer was just too good to do it now. And I also think if you're Brendan Schaub, why not take the opportunity to do a special right now at three years in so that when you do your next one, the the golfing class, I'm oh, sorry, the golfing quality will be really adamant. It'll be really obvious how be much better he's got. And if he's as determined and as hardworking as he makes it seem, he, that is it, as he says he is, or as we've seen he has a, has been over the years, 
I have no doubt that the next one will be much better. Now, it doesn't mean the next one will be much, just because the next one will be much better than the first one, that it'd be much better than anything else on the scene. I still think that comedy, like all other aspects, or like all other entertainment fields, they don't, um, the stars, I don't, you can't really compare Kevin Hart and, um, I don't know, and um, who's the poker person can compare him to? Yeah, you can't even compare Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle. They operate in two different areas, right? Even though they're both, you know, mega mega star comedians, or, you know, as Kevin Hart, as I say, rock star comedians who could probably fill an entire stadium full of people, they're not the same kind of comedian, right? They, op- they operate in different lanes. And I think what we're seeing now is maybe the evolution of comedy, and we're maybe seeing Brendan being them the first of his kind of kind to burst that through that scene. Because it's like, imagine if Jake Paul decided, or Logan Paul decided to do, do comedy right it would probably go the same way as brendan shaw right after two or three years right they'd be you know in within within a space of a year they'd be selling out arenas all over the place right within two or three years somebody would want to put money in their pocket and do a comedy special whether it's youtube netflix hbo someone would want to invest into them just because they want to tie them down and get them to do shows on their platform or in a network it would be that it would work out the same way so their lane of their like their lane of comedy in the same way that you know some of the guys on youtube get annoyed with all those um vine comedians it's not the comedy that we're used to right it's not the uh punchline punchline comedy it's not the really intricate storytelling comedy that we're used to with some of the real pure kind of comedians but it's a type of comedy right and a type of audience that like it and if you watch the show the brandon shaw you'll be surprised show it looks like people are laughing people are having a good time he was having a good time on stage and if you go through his instagram stories he's reposted people that have had a good experience watching it people do like what he puts out there right they're a big fan of it so I think for some of the haters out there, some people that don't like what he's doing, I think it's okay to have two thoughts in your brain, right? To hold two opinions at the same time. Yes, he's maybe undeserving on paper of this special and the special lacks in quality or it may be obvious talent than some people out there. But again, comparing it to top 1% of top comedians isn't fair. He's only three years in. And he didn't just get the special based on ability alone. He got it because of all the other things going for him, all these other um, bases that he's been able to cover. And I think he's probably the only one maybe in that kind of area, maybe outside of Joe Rogan, who's really been able to ace all of those kind of areas, right? Whether it's podcasting, whether it's appearances, another podcast, whether it's um, writing and all that. He's really, really trying to kind of build up his, his overall brand empire. And then to get to a point where, you know, the numbers speak for themselves, right? Regardless of what people say or how they review stuff, they're going to keep checking the Showtime special. When the next one comes out, people are going to want to hate watch it anyway. So I think sometimes, like I said, like I mentioned the other day, I wish we could get to a point in, in life where if you didn't like something, you just didn't watch it. You just didn't pay any mind to it. But I think sometimes with the level of amount of hate that they're giving this, with the amount of attention they're giving it, with the, the amount of times people are going in these comments and trying to say stuff to him and trying to write bad reviews, you're only garnering more attention and more eyes to it. People are just going to be naturally intrigued about watching what this train wreck is. And when you watch it, you're like, it's not necessarily a train wreck. It's just novice. It's just a really, it's just a really young comic doing his thing. But again, like I said, like he's taking a punt. He's put himself out there, which is a lot. It's a lot. Again, for some people out there, commentators, you're not going to care, right? About that whole line of thinking, but it's a big deal, man. Putting yourself out there, even me on this low level of doing this podcast, recording with a webcam sitting here in my fucking, you know, in my jeans and my denim jacket, right, talking shit into a microphone, it's a lot to put yourself out there. It takes a lot of balls. It's not easy to to say, okay, cool, I think I'm good at this and I'm going to put it out there because, you know, you essentially think, you're, you're essentially, um, what are you saying? You are essentially rating yourself in some regard, right? You are essentially saying to yourself, you know what, I'm good at this. I'm going to put it out there. And then people are having to judge it. You know, you've, you've worked on this for three years. You've been harnessed. You, I, think, I think you said he did over 100 shows with that same routine and you know tightened up bits and pieces over there so you've done you've done the work you've put in as many reps as you can right and then people have just got an hour to kind of critique it or maybe less than an hour to critique you i think i've seen people say they stop watching after half an hour or something right or even 10 minutes so they're instantly making a snap judgment of your product that you've spent so much time and again people don't need to know how much time you spend in it it doesn't really matter to them but i'm just saying let's have that kind of empathy to understand that you know it's again this first thing it's going to take time he's going to get better over time and i think he's got the right people around him who are going to say it, say it how it is and allow him to grow. And I think, you know, by, but I just think now it's getting to a point where people are just being nasty in order to kind of put him off doing another special, which I don't see how that serves any purpose to anyone, right? What are you trying to make him do? Trying to have, they, they want him to have a mental breakdown. They, they get annoyed that he's not upset 
they get annoyed that he keeps saying to people they i've seen people online that are getting annoyed that brenda keeps saying oh thank for the good support from people i thank you for the good messages and all the nice reviews what else do you think he's gonna say do you think he's gonna feed into your um negative statements he's only gonna put a barrier in your back like they get excited when he like loosely or you know um broadly vaguely mention something to do with a subreddit or mention something to do with some people's comments online people get really excited imagine if he personally addresses a user it's not going to end well look how much hate or look how much um uh vitriol kevin durant gets it was getting when it was discovered he was making he had burner account defending himself or when he starts arguing with people with 50 followers on twitter people look at him like a weirdo like you can't have it both ways you can't be annoyed that he's not addressing you as a troll or as a hater and you also can't be annoyed when he does come at you and, and blocks you or says something harsh oh he's too sensitive it's like what doesn't make any sense come on man so again i think uh give the guy a break lay off him um again it's, it's only the it's only the first special yes it's only three years in you maybe shouldn't have done it so soon but again who are we to say when you shouldn't shouldn't do anything we're not creating specials we're not out there on the stage we're not out there with the weight of the world on us the weight of our family expectations from an entire network like it's a lot of pressure to be on someone and i think his recent appearance on joe rogan kind of shows like you know he's feeling the pressure a bit and again he needs you know it's, it's good to have a bit of love out there man a bit of love a bit of sympathy a bit of understanding like, look it's your first one it probably didn't go the way you wanted it to go but like, again recuperate and come back again stronger and you'll be fine man it is what it is so again like i said um lay off lay off brendan Schaub let him grow let him get better and if he doesn't call but again like i said in the other episode if you don't like something just don't watch it what what went to i i I'm, maybe that's the nature of social media because it's just a commentary thing you have to kind of say things but what 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 happened to the just not watching something you don't care about like i don't understand it It just has to be this vitriol like oh end him cancel him it's like come on man it doesn't make any sense but again maybe that's me leave Ben and Shubalone.